Hey guys, so let's see how to test the fuel injectors to see if they leak too much fuel when the pull suite is sent it by the computer to activate the injector electromagnet. Let's talk a little bit about what is going to be the impact on the engine when the fuel injectors are leaking. So let's say for example the cylinder 1 and cylinder 2 has the fuel injectors leaking and uh, the other two are okay, like normal values. What will happen is that these two will put more fuel into the exhaust, basically. So once the oxygen sensor is reading more fuel, more hydrocarbons into the exhaust gases, it will send a message to the PCM to cut down the fuel distribution, to reduce the fuel distribution. So the computer will not know exactly which one of the cylinders is leaking fuel or which one is using more fuel if, or if all of them are using fuel. So it will adjust the pulse width the time of when the electric pulse is keeping the injector open so it will reduce that time in order to spray less fuel obviously so it will do that for all the cylinders for all the injectors and therefore if these two were okay they will be reduced and therefore you might get knock because into these two cylinders the explosion inside will be less powerful compared to these two which will have more fuel you can get like misfire codes if let's say three of these fuel injectors will be leaky and the last cylinder is not leaky, then the computer will adjust the pulse width on all of them. Therefore, on the last cylinder, you might get very little fuel, which might read or translate as a misfire, or you will feel a knock into the engine and this engine will run very rough. So there can be all sorts of variations from this point, but it's important to understand how it works and why it will affect the engine and how it will affect the engine. Also, if you have a scan tool which will show you the short-term fuel trim and the long-term fuel trim, you'll notice that both of them will be negative or at least the long-term fuel trim will be negative because, again, the computer is going to reduce the fuel. So that percentage, the negative percentage, is the deviation from the normal, for, from the regular preset values which the computer has. So that being said, let's go ahead and do this test on the car. So I'm going to start with removing the throttle body in front of this fuel rail. Disconnect the throttle body. Now I'm going to remove the bolts from the fuel rail. Now let's unplug the connectors from the top of the injectors. Now I'm going to gently pry out this fuel line. Here it comes together with the injectors. So in order to do this test, you want the fuel rail to be still connected to the fuel line. It means that the fuel pump will deliver fuel pressure as normal as the car will run. You need something to measure the fluids, like a syringe. I'm going to use this syringe because that's the only thing I have. You can use any recipient with some uh, level marks like this. I'm going to use this lockable plier to block the exit of the fluid. Now I'm going to turn the key in the second position in the ignition. One other thing you can do, use your voltmeter, turn it to 20 volts direct current and you can begin to measure the voltage at the connector on each injector. So we've got 3.83, 3.7, 3.7 and 3.9. You don't want to see a big variation in voltage when you test the connectors while the car is not running. Now each injector has two pins through which the computer is sending 12 volts the pulse width of 12 volts so for that i'm going to use also a small 12 volt battery and i'm going to apply 12 volts to these two pins in order to release the fuel pressure inside the fuel rail in the fuse box in order to keep the fuel pressure on and constant all the time i'm going to remove the fuel pump relay on the relay we've got the pin 87 and pin number 30 which are basically the switch on the power side of the fuel pump so if i jump those two pins the fuel pump should start the fuel pump is running as you can see as you can hear so now i'm going to be able to do my measurements on the fuel injector so i'm going to apply 12 volts and i'm going to count how much time it needs to fill up to let's say one of the marks let's say 20 or 30 the bigger it is, the easier it is to see the difference. So you can go with up to 60 milliliters, it's no problem, but you have to dump a lot of fuel, so it's up to you of your uh, possibilities. I'm gonna go with 30, 30 milliliters, and the seconds are gonna be marked on the screen. I cannot count precisely, so 
I'm going to do that when I'm going to edit the video. So let's see. Three, two, one. Right. Now let's see the second injector. I'm going to activate the pump. Three, two, one. So it's a good idea when you position the injector inside the recipient to make the injector not be able to spray into the existing fuel because the fuel will jump over. All right, for the third injector, let's see. The fuel pump is on and let's start this test in three, two, one. In your situation, it's also a good idea to record this process and then you can play back the footage and you can see the time. And also one more thing, you can also see the way they spray the injectors and you can inspect these little holes. All of them, they should spray the fuel smoothly and you, sh you should not see like big drops coming out. And that was pretty much it guys. I hope this video is useful. If so, give it a thumbs up. If you have this Opel Corsa, it's gonna be a link in the description below with a playlist with all the videos I made about this car. And until next time, Take care so I can see you soon.